Good afternoon. I'm Eileen Strumpel and I'm the inaugural Dean of the Herb Alpert School of Music. I'm excited in a few moments to begin to celebrate the inspiring achievements of our graduating class. Before we begin the ceremony, however, I would like to reflect upon this seminal moment in our history. 2020 has been a year of significant challenges for us as Americans and as global citizens. Sadly, these tribulations have and continue to be felt most profoundly by our black communities. The recent murders of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmed Aubrey, all require that we recognize the gaping wounds of racism in the obvious and insidious ways it continues to undermine America's foundational institutions and our collective moral and ethical failings that have led to the legitimization of state-sanctioned violence against Black people. Systemic injustice and inequality have destroyed the freedom of our Black citizens for far too long in countless areas, including educational access, employment, healthcare, and others. And as we begin the second decade of this new century, we must demand better and work collectively to facilitate meaningful change. Do you remember Trayvon Martin or 12-year-old Tamir Rice or Sandra Bland, Philandro Castile, Eric Garner, Freddie Gray? Say their names. This is not new. When we denounce these murders, we must also connect it to larger circumstances. This is not an isolated tragedy or a passing pandemic. These are deep-seated continuing injustices that are endemic to American society. We must acknowledge the truth head on. I've been heartened by the peaceful protests I've witnessed throughout the US and the globe and by the outpouring of support from our School of Music community in response to these recent horrors and in a shared search for solutions and change. These demonstrations have given me faith that the new generation of leaders and scholars, many of whom that will be graduating today, will have the grace and the fortitude to institute the critical action and change that ensures our Black communities thrive. As the inaugural Dean of the Herb Alpert School of Music, I promise to listen with an open heart while ensuring our school continues to be a supportive and welcoming ecosystem for Black musicians, educators, and scholars. I am committed to working collaboratively with our Office of Student Affairs, our incoming Dean of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, and most importantly, our students to facilitate access and opportunity for our Black students and for all. Music is an important and unifying force. Its ability to transcend barriers and express our shared humanity will be critical in the days and the years ahead. I know our graduates will be there to lead this charge forward as our truth tellers and our wayfarers. I would now like to share a beautiful and moving tribute, a performance of Lift Every Voice and Sing by our very own music student, Angel Riley. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring, ring with the Thank you. 
resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. Let us march on till victory is won. Welcome class of 2020. Welcome your family and friends to our commencement ceremony today. I know that this isn't the commencement we were all hoping for, but regardless of the format, it doesn't matter. It doesn't take away from your accomplishments. And I could not be more thrilled to be here today and celebrate our graduates as they mark this indelible milestone during an unforgettable time. Class of 2020, you are exceptional in so many ways. You are the very first graduating class from UCLA's Herb Alpert School of Music as we now celebrate our fourth year as an independent school of music on the UCLA campus. You display an admirable amount of perseverance and determination, and it has allowed you to thrive during this challenging time. Not only do you embody our school's mission and vision, our core values, but you embody a true Bruin spirit. You're entering a world that needs your creative solutions and needs the healing power of music now more than ever. Music continues to promote the exchange of ideas, champion social justice, and make the world a better place. You see, arts and artists are the heart and soul of democracy. You are the future of scholarship, of research, performance, education, and industry. And as such, you have the opportunity to make a difference that will be felt for generations to come. This is a huge and exciting opportunity, but it's also a great responsibility. I know that you will embrace it with the same fortitude and perseverance you have displayed during your time at UCLA. Graduates, I share your excitement as you continue in the pursuit of your craft, continue forward in your studies, and embark upon your careers. May today stand as a testament to your training, your talent, 
your perseverance, and your creativity. I, for one, can't wait to see and experience all that you achieve. And I encourage in whatever you do to embody in your music, in your scholarship, in your life, in your writing, candor, and creativity, and courage. And now, without any further ado, it gives me great pleasure to introduce one of our longtime friends and supporters, Herbie Hancock. I'm in my studio, as you guys can see. Hi, I'm Herbie Hancock. Congratulations to all the members of the UCLA Herb Albert School of Music, class of 2020. I know this is a challenging time and not the way you had imagined celebrating your graduation. But I also know that with your talent, creativity, and all the knowledge and wisdom you have gained during your time at UCLA, you will help create a more positive world filled with beautiful music. I have enjoyed teaching not just the amazing students of the Hancock Institute of Jazz Performance, but I also cherish my encounters with all the students at UCLA with whom I have interacted. To all of you, I wish you the best in your future endeavors in music and in life. It is now my greatest pleasure to introduce a 13-time Grammy Award-winning musician, a pioneering guitarist, a compassionate human being, and a great and dear friend of mine for almost a half century. This year's keynote speaker, Carlos Santana. Congratulations. Um, my heart goes to each and every one of you, um, knowing that every one of you uh, carries the torch of impeccable integrity towards the future. We believe in you, and we have complete confidence that your spirits will achieve what needs to be done in this planet for the highest good of all people. Congratulations, uh, it's, it's a grand day, uh, and we celebrate your glorious achievement. As you know, uh, this whole world is being um, affected by this uh, virus, this coronavirus. There's two things actually uh, that are hurt in humanity, and that is the coronavirus and the injustice of uh, being done to black people and brown people in the streets. We need healing with coronavirus and we need healing with human behavior towards one another. The question is how can music help the unfoldment of human consciousness uh, reach a place where we can live in unity and harmony? Well, that's a very good question. There's songs that are assigned and designed to do that. One Love, Bob Marley, Blowing in the Wind, Bob, uh, Bob Dylan, uh, All You Need Is Love, Imagine, The Beatles, uh, what's going on, Marvin Gaye? I love Supreme, John Coltrane. You see where I'm going. There's songs that need to be played in shopping malls, parking lots, elevators, to help humans not fall into depression, frustration, or suicide. You know, music is, especially a melody, is what is going to align this world into an unprecedented unity and harmony. Let me remind you how wonderful it felt when the Berlin Wall came down and Mandela was free. In the same day, how wonderful it felt for the year 2000 to arrive and all of us celebrated from New Zealand to Honolulu with unity and harmony and elegance, excellence and compassion and grace 
So I trust that you have the courage to do what they did in Europe. Yugoslavia, Czechoslovakia, uh, Romania, you know, uh, Hungary, all of these people were under a bad regime and they all went to the streets and they didn't came back till they changed it. They changed the mean, evil regime that is against humanity, you know, and it's great that you have this glorious education under your belt. However, there's another university of the streets that we need to graduate. And the subject is equality, fairness, and justice. And we must do it with joy, not with fear or anger. But we can change this here now. We can, you are the ones that can help our children's children live a quality of life without being afraid to go out in the streets. That's what I want every day. That's what I saw in Woodstock. That's what I see every day. And that is my goal personally to do with, with what I have. So I want to ignite you to believe that it can be done. Every one of us can participate in utilizing music and your brilliance to make this heaven on earth. From my heart to your heart, the best thing that I can say is that from God, through us, for you. Thank you so much. Again, congratulations, graduation, and let's elevate our light to new heights in human behavior with high consciousness. Peace. And now, please welcome the students of the Herbie Hancock Institute of Jazz Performance at UCLA. Roni Eitan on harmonica, Aidan Lombard on trumpet, Leonard Simpson on alto sax, Chris Lewis on tenor sax, Paul Cornish on piano, Emma Dayhoff on bass, and Malachi Whitson on drums, performing Taverna Blue by Roni Eitan.
Good afternoon. I'm Associate Dean Juliana Gondek, Professor of Music. I'd first like to offer my congratulations to the class of 2020. You should be so proud of your achievements. Your contributions to music will be needed now more than ever. I now have the great pleasure of introducing to you the graduate student speaker for our 2020 commencement. Desiree Balfour is receiving her Doctorate of Musical Arts degree in choral conducting. She's had the honor of directing and performing with UCLA's choral ensembles, in addition to serving as chorus master for Opera UCLA. Her research and writing endeavors have taken her across the country and have allowed her to connect with some of the world's leading scholars. Desiree was also named the inaugural Paul and Barbara Bent Choral Fellow for Meritorious Achievement. Prior to her time at UCLA, Desiree directed ensembles at a performing arts high school, served as master teacher, festival adjudicator, honor choir director, and leader within organizations that support students and teachers throughout Los Angeles. She received her master's degree in choral conducting and was the first assistant conductor for Vox Femina, where she was pivotal in launching that organization's youth outreach program. Please join me in welcoming and celebrating Desiree Balfour. Dear UCLA Herb Albert School of Music, Class of 2020, I am honored to be with you here today at the first ever, and hopefully last, <laughs> virtual commencement. To quote a Garfield the Cat poster, remember, today is the first day of the rest of your life. As today marks the beginning of a new life stage, I want to speak to you about three insights I have gained during my time at UCLA. The first thing I learned is about the imposter syndrome. Oxford defines the imposter syndrome as the persistent inability to believe that one's success is deserved or has been legitimately achieved. My parents never graduated from college and had a less than timely filing of bankruptcy during my senior year of high school. Picture me in a Del Taco drive through having a complete nervous breakdown trying just to figure out how college was going to even be possible for me. UCLA was the school where all the super talented, smart, successful students went. Despite having straight A's, taking AP classes, being a leader in performing arts ensembles, working more than 20 hours a week to pay for things like graduation, I never even applied to UCLA. I ignored the evidence and believed that it, there was no way I was good enough. But about four years ago, I did a thing. <laughs> And being invited to UCLA to work and study alongside all of you has been an absolute dream come true. Imposter syndrome has still weaved its magic or terror into all six quarters of my DMA. However, not only have I gained the skills and expertise and wonderful relationships, I have persevered through it and am stronger for it. Many of the relationships that I've fostered during my time at UCLA, these folks have shared with me that they too, at times, have felt like an imposter. Similar sentiments have been shared from some of the musicians and educators that I have the most respect for. I suspect that we will continue to encounter this invisible imposter state, but I invite you to always look at the evidence to curb any defeating self-talk and to walk through every door, no matter how daunting, knowing that you can do it, that you have done it, that you will do it one step at a time. Which leads me to the second thing I learned, to trust my gut. About 10 years ago, I had everything I thought I wanted. I had worked hard and finally achieved what looked on paper like the perfect life. Unfortunately, I was living a life in most respects that I thought I was supposed to live. Most of my decisions were motivated by striving to gain the approval of others. One day, a very good friend of mine gave me some unsolicited life-changing advice. She told me that my desire to make everyone else happy was actually hurting those close to me. 
When I stopped adopting the values and opinions of others, I started to learn how to listen to and trust my gut. And I started to make life choices that aligned with my heart, beliefs, and dreams. I vividly remember the day that I first entertained the idea of working toward a doctoral degree. It wasn't a dream anyone had made for me. And now I quite surprisingly have the honor of proudly being before you on computer screens everywhere, having accomplished my dream with the help and support of relationships full of true acceptance and integrity. Maybe the expression dream big isn't about shooting for the stars like an astronaut as much as it is about dreaming for yourself. So for your life, I see you being innovative, brave, breaking free from any chains that hold you back from being your authentic self. Trust your gut, <laughs> it isn't going anywhere and you have come too far to settle. When life gives you lemons, make music <laughs> and listen to those closest to you telling you the hardest things to hear. Hashtag your real friends. If needed, start a new path, do your homework, do it one step at a time. The third thing I learned was not to fear the unknown. Congratulations on persevering through the imposter syndrome and achieving your dream of earning your first, second, or third degree in music. Now that you have earned this elite degree status, prepare to be bombarded with high paying gigs and job prospects. Is, is that virtual crickets I hear? <laughs> if your career future looks bleak at the moment, I encourage you to stay open, creative, patient, and fiercely optimistic. It's scary not to know what our future will be. I am currently searching for a choral teaching position and I have no idea what the next few months are going to look like. I also didn't know how we were going to make meaningful musical experiences this past quarter. But I believe we did. The experiences of teaching and learning remotely this, this strange time has proven that even when there is an unknown future, it doesn't mean that it needs to be bleak. We can embrace the unknown as an opportunity to use our, creative, our creativity to find solutions that matter. Furthermore, it is probable that history will repeat itself, that humans will continue to find the most fulfillment through our loved ones and still be rewarded for hard work, passion, intelligence, genuine character, a sense of humor, and kindness. The fear of the unknown reminds me of a Deepak Chopra quote, which reads, when we accept all of life's contradictions, when we can comfortably flow between the banks of pleasure and pain, experiencing them both while getting stuck in neither, then we are free. Be present. Even in challenging times, remember that life is ultimately the sweetest when it is lived and felt. You are an artist after all. Through discipline and vulnerability, you have worked extremely hard to move and shake the world. You have stood in front of diverse audiences to say, I openly share with you who I am and what I hold close to my heart. You are a living a life compelled by beauty and truth. And if society is not always the most generous when it comes to monetarily rewarding music and art, know that you will continue, no matter your path, to breathe life into this world. You hold the expressive tools to heal and excite collective and individual souls. You are an honest expression of humanity and your work is possibly the most effective bridge toward unity. In dire times, we will need to hear your voice. And we are in a pandemic and our time at UCLA's beautiful campus was suddenly cut short. I know the disappointments only start there. Nevertheless, 
When we look back on these days, I trust that we have grown more closely connected due to this strange time. Just the act of planning and organizing this day was a labor of love fueled by creativity and tireless effort. I invite you all to join me and take a moment surrounded by all of our greatest advocates to remember how it has felt to have been a student and performer at UCLA. I encourage you to reflect on the big time lessons that you have learned and to remember who has large scale impacted your journey, to compare where you started to where you are now. The expression YOLO <laughs> means you only live once. Someone reinterpreted the gesture to say, actually, you only die once. You get to live every day. I believe that as we commence our future, as murky or as clear as it may seem, it is important to practice daily gratitude. I am so incredibly thankful for all of you and for each and every moment at UCLA. My experiences have been filled with incredible music making, with a caring, thoughtful, brilliant faculty, with a world-class student body, and also a few personal triumphs. I am proud of our accomplishments. We persevered past any voices that maybe weren't always so nurturing. Please know that you are not an imposter. You are a rock star in your own right that has trusted their gut enough to graduate from the best public university in the nation, as recently reported by News & World Report. And the upside of any and all unknowns is that they will never be as boring as our long commencement speeches. Thank you all so very much. Good afternoon. I'm Academic Associate Dean and Distinguished Professor of Musicology, Raymond Nam. Today I have the honor of introducing you to two talented undergraduate speakers, Jack Aaron and Tori Stasia Gubian. Jack Green Aaron graduates from UCLA with dual Bachelor of Arts degrees in music with a concentration in composition and music education with a minor in history. As a student, Jack has had the unique opportunity of presenting his research on chant notation at Powell Library and having his music recorded by visiting pianist Jose Menor and Dr. G.A. Chang. He has also served as social chair for the UCLA CNAFME chapter and as president of the Phi Alpha Theta History Honor Society. Following his graduation, he hopes to share the gift of music with others by teaching composition with theory um, to high school students while pursuing his master's degree in composition. Our second undergraduate speaker is Tori Stasia Bubian, who is receiving her Bachelor of Arts degree in musicology with a minor in music industry, focusing on 20th century pop music, especially the Beach Boys. Tori received the Edgardo and Francesca Acosta Endowed Scholarship in 2019 and is the 2019 Dean's Academic Ambassador for Creating Musical Community. She has been involved in a variety of activities during her time at UCLA, um, including representing the School of Music as a troubadour, serving as an editor of Muse, UCLA's first musicology undergraduate research journal, and as a member of the Music Industry Committee. Tori also volunteered with SLAM at UCLA, where she taught music to grade school students and has interned with local radio stations in San Diego and with the Santa Monica Symphony. Please join me in welcoming Jack Aaron and Tori Bubian. Thank you. Much better. Hi, I'm Jack Green Aaron, and I am the undergraduate commencement speaker for the UCLA Herb Alpert School of Music class of 2020. I should confess I don't have much experience delivering commencement addresses. Uh, the last one I gave was for my fifth grade graduation where I pointed my classmates to the bold and bright new world that was middle school. 
and I'm not sure how well that experience prepared me for this assignment. The bold new world that awaits us on the other side of this ceremony seems anything but bright at the moment. And our old world, the one that we came to know and love within UCLA and within the campus of the Herb Alpert School of Music was very suddenly yanked away from us this quarter. And I suppose it's easy to lament what we've lost and to long for a real commencement ceremony where I deliver this speech on, you know, on stage and not through the camera lens of my iPhone 11. Still, I take solace not from a piece of classical music, but from a classic Marvel movie, Thor Ragnarok. Bear with me. For those of you who aren't cinephiles or haven't kept up with your Marvel Cinematic Universe, in the movie, the main character Thor goes through trials and tribulations, as does any main character of most of these Marvel movies. But upon the destruction of his homeworld Asgard, he is, he is destroyed himself, as anyone would be. But throughout the movie, he has his father, Odin, telling him that Asgard is not a place, it is a people. And finally, at the end, he makes that connection. And I guess what I'm saying is, so too is UCLA and the Herb Alpert School of Music. The campus is a place, yes, and the Herb Alpert School of Music a set of structures within it. But as with Asgard, ours is a place defined by its people. Our school is far more than its fixed, built environment. It is a dynamic, living community made up of scholars, teachers, and students who learn from one another and who bring to their studies a shared passion for music. So I want to thank my fellow students who have taught me so much and my teachers who have taught me even more. I suspect that many of you, like me, dreamed of attending UCLA, and that many of you, like me, believed that being a student at the Herb Alpert School of Music was a truly special experience. In the best of times, the passion for music doesn't make for the surest career path. And these are certainly not the best of times to be seeking employment. Nonetheless, I refuse to succumb to pessimism, and not just because the UCLA Centennial campaign told us that Bruins are optimists or whatever that means. Rather, I'm hopeful because as music lovers, music players, and music makers, we have learned to adapt to key changes, embrace unexpected improvisation, and to score our own standards. Let us all take solace that in good times and bad, compositions will still be written, songs will still be sung, and instruments will still be, well, played. And maybe sometime soon, we can do all these things together again and not from six feet apart. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Tori and I'm so excited to be speaking at our 2020 commencement. I think it's safe to say this is not the commencement we had hoped for, but I'm grateful to the School of Music team for making it the best it can be. This commencement not only represents the challenges that music students have gone through, but also, quite literally, what the world has gone through. Rather than focus on the unfortunate time at hand, I want to focus on what brings us together through this pandemic, and my favorite part of the School of Music, our community. The community at the School of Music is truly special and includes everyone, from our students and staff to our professors, the music librarians, Frank, our amazing custodian, and more. The community at the School of Music withstands emotional, mental, and as we've discovered, physical turmoil. Not only have we supported each other through the typical challenges associated with college, but also through personal challenges as well. I feel that I can ask my peers for advice on anything, and I have. The community at the school has had the biggest influence on my college experience. I cannot stress how loving this community is, and that is what has gotten me through the challenges of transferring, taking 20 units, and maintaining motivation through online classes. As cheesy as it sounds, it's the little things I will think of when reminiscing about what I will miss most about UCLA. Some of these include having conversations with whoever the gem working at the music library is that day and not actually studying, going to our advisors with questions, but ending up hanging out and talking about the latest music memes, 
hearing sometimes worrisome sounds coming from the basement, creating highly inconvenient yet impenetrable circle in the middle of the hallway with my fellow musicology students, or walking back to my apartment with a friend after that late night ethnomusicology ensemble. One of the things I will miss most is saying hi to everyone while walking through the music building and admiring everyone's fashionable outfits. This is a fashionable school. I will even miss the iffy bathrooms in the basement where some of the stall doors didn't close. These small, special moments mean so much, and I will treasure them. I hope we all will think of and treasure moments like that. Luckily, some aspects of our special School of Music community have translated to our online learning environment, including Jackbox hangouts with the musicology gang, seeing everyone's PJs, which are still fashionable. I know my double chin has been present at most classes and noticing the wacky backgrounds everyone carefully selects for their Zoom classes. Even through these online interactions, the same lighthearted school of music sentiment is still there. Seeing all of your faces has truly helped me get through online classes, and I hope others feel the same way. One of the foundational parts of our musical community here has been our professors and the school of music staff. The professors care so much about us, and it really shows. Thanks to our small class sizes, I've really gotten to know our professors and TAs, and I felt that I have a support system. Whether through lessons, a seminar, or an ensemble, our professors really care about what they teach and about the students as well. I'm really going to miss the fun we have in our classes and the time spent connecting with professors and classmates. Sometimes I even miss sightseeing musicianship. Okay, maybe not. The empathy students have for one another and that our professors have for us has created a community that has allowed us to thrive. I also cannot forget to mention the staff who advocates for students and helps the school come out in one piece every year. The troubles associated with the current pandemic have only amplified what I've just described. The communication between staff, students, and professors has been extremely helpful. The community has come together even though physical boundaries hold us apart and the love and care of the entire school has shined through spotty Wi-Fi. The definition of commencement is beginning. I just learned this a week ago, and it's hard to imagine a beginning during a pandemic. Graduating at this time is challenging, but I believe our education has prepared as well. All of my classmates are immensely talented, but even better, they are all incredibly kind. We are strong, and I have faith in everything we do. This could mean taking on gardening, roller skating, perfecting your Animal Crossing town, or whatever you feel passionate about. No time is time wasted. I hope you remember as we graduate that you are all amazing people and I feel blessed to know you. Whatever your next step, know that I am proud of all of us and I know our friends at the School of Music are proud of us as well. Congratulations class of 2020! Oh no, <laughs> my head came off. <laughs> My dears, I'm here to congratulate you on what you've accomplished in our program and to wish you all the very best as you move on. Commencement has always seemed to me a very equivocal event. The word means beginning, but in truth, the event faces two directions at once and the feelings that come with each direction can be pretty complex. Perhaps they're even more so than usual this time around. We live in a society that emphasizes achievement as instrumentality. What is my degree good for? How can it help me get what I want in life? While there's certainly no doubt of your achievement, I don't need to tell you that the answers to those questions have been iffy for quite some time, and never more so than now. If things weren't already uncertain, the global pandemic has radically destabilized your hopes, dreams, and lived realities. It may well be tempting, therefore, to feel that your degree is good for nothing, that it will get you nowhere. I'm here to encourage you to consider a different point of view, one that indulges neither the idea of education as experiential capital to be hoarded, nor its flip side, sentimental nostalgia for a past time imagined as vacated, used up and gone, time spent. 
I think this is a moment in which we can all pause and recall the oceanic vision of time and experience so beautifully encapsulated in 1912 by the Spanish lyric poet Antonio Machado and set to music many times since by countless singer-songwriters. I'll give the translation first. You who walk, your footprints are the path, the only path. You who walk, there is no path. The path is made by walking. By walking, the path is made. And in turning to look back, one sees a trail that will never be trod again. You who walk, there is no path. Only your wake upon the waters. Caminante son tus huellas el camino y nada más. Caminante no hay camino, se hace el camino al andar. Al andar se hace el camino y al volver la vista atrás se ve la senda que nunca se va a volver a pisar. Caminante no hay camino sino estelas en el mar. Congratulations to all of you for being exactly where you are. The PhD in Musicology, Rosaline Rhee. The Bachelor of Arts in Musicology, Tori Stacia Bubian, Su Young Grace Choi, Joey Galasso, Matthew Gilbert, Laurie McMahon, Karen Tanthragoon. I would now like to introduce my esteemed colleague, Professor Robert Fink who will announce graduates in our Music History and Industry program. Chloe Dale Pazwillow. Alexa Baruch. Alana Maria Chester. Brendan Palomo. In the UCLA Department of Music, our work is primarily the expression and communication of emotion, meaning, and humanity through creation and interpretation of so-called Western classical music and jazz at the graduate level as performers, composers, and educators. We pursue beauty through balance and contrast, passionate and informed, technical and artistic, structured and improvisatory, simple and complex, angry and mournful and peaceful and celebratory, provocative and comforting, intimate, visceral, authentic. And we create community between student and teacher, between composer and performer and audience, within studios and ensembles, with our partners in major institutions, community organizations and schools, through interactions between scholarship and practice, and with the Herb Alpert School of Music staff, who are so pivotal to our success. In short, what our students and faculty do is much of what our world yearns for in these challenging times. And you have an enormous opportunity, indeed even an obligation, to help us all heal, both now and when we have the chance to come together in person sometime soon. Thank you for entrusting us to help hone your gifts Congratulations on completing your degrees, and all best for bright and music-filled futures. These are the candidates for the Doctor of Musical Arts in Music. Desiree Balfour. Xenia Diviatkina Lo. Anastasia Pedanova. Anahit Rostomian. These are the candidates for the PhD in Music. Christian Giebert, Patrick Gutman, Zachary Alexander Klein, Harush Majd, Zach Neufeld, Tomas Pierre Serrate. These are the candidates for the Master of Arts degree in music. Daniel Bayot. Shang Kun Ma. 
These are the candidates for the Master of Music degree in music. Mindy Chang, Paul Cornish, Emma Kelly Hood Dayhoff, Michelle Drever, Christina Esser, Roni Aton, Benjamin Hare, Tasseafe Heiner, Killian Kelly, Guang Kim, Hana Kim, Elizabeth Lacoste, Emily Lazernick, Natalie Leonard, Christian Lewis, Aiden Terence Lumbard, Alexander Papandrea, Angel Nicole Riley, Reese Rose, William Garrett Schoonover, Leonard Simpson III, Byron Slee, Kayla Solomon, Jonathan Tompkins, Malachi Whitson, Hannah Yokute. These are the candidates for the bachelor's degree in music. Elise Albion. Mario Arias. Jack Green Aaron. Moses Aubrey. Tyler Bailey. Ashley Bowman. Samantha Buchanan, Isaac Koldas, Xiang Chao, Anchi Chen, Jennifer Chang, Lancelot Chu, Tara Fei, Zach Freeman. Ilana Gitterman, Diana Lynn Greenwood, Lauren Hickey, Christopher Michael Hightower, Shola Homa, Rachel She, Sydney Shue, Bryn Kirsch, Vivi Kung, Amanda J. Lee, Chelsea Cheyun Lee, Jennifer Lee, Jelena Lee, Kyung Jin Lee, Elaine Lin, Grace Martino, Miles Mateus, Paul McCallion, Kim Mendes McLeish, Madison Miller, Sandra Na, Wilfredo Nazareno Nazareno the Third, Kevin Needham, Sarah Nimiro. Sammy Oliveira, Annabelle Park, Sophie Patterson, Christina Prez, Duong Fan, Anjali Pillai, Chris Ruth, Will Stevens. Luna Asuka Suzuki, 
Oliver Taylor, Sean Tang Wang, Charlie Tholander, Eliana Danielle Van Rentergem, Elizabeth Marguerite Van Rentergem, Samantha Sabedra Webster, Tiffany E. Wee, Cameron Michael Joyce Wirtz, Simiao Xiao, Caleb Yang, Enru Rebecca Yang, Brandon Joe. Hello, I am Mark Flegman, Chair of the Department of Ethnomusicology. To the Ethnomusicology graduates of 2020, I'm sure this is a graduation you will never forget. Although during these times, the future may feel uncertain, we know your determination and resolve will serve you well to find your voice and your path. You are part of a unique program at UCLA. Ethnomusicology started here 60 years ago, a field dedicated to combining music and culture, both in the past and in the present. Through your studies and playing of music, you offer the world a unique perspective on what music is and what it can be. You are poised to carve out a bright future. We are proud of all that you have achieved. We are inspired by your creativity and look forward to your successes ahead. Congratulations on this wonderful accomplishment. And here are the names of the graduates of the Department of Ethnomusicology. Blanca Carla Ariaga, Edward Teddy Nick Breck, Cameron Caceres, Kamiko Daniels, Sebastian Owen Jones, Andrew Caperos, Brian Yu Shin Kim, Sarah Alana McKagan, Nadia Sagai, Rachel Scott, Alexander Smith, Vanessa Lee Whitford. Thank you, Mark. Today I'm proud to celebrate our graduating Global Jazz Studies majors who have worked incredibly hard over the course of their time at UCLA. I have great confidence that each of you will achieve wonderful things as you take your next steps forward. I will now present our candidates who will be receiving their Bachelor of Arts degrees in Global Jazz Studies. Jacob Augustine, Isaac Rudy Devera, Ashley Elizabeth Crow, Ennis Suavenko Harris, Colin Jerome McCrary. I would now like to welcome back inaugural Dean Strumple, who will have the honor of conferring degrees to our School of Music graduates. Congratulations to all of our candidates. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Regents of the University of California and the Chancellor of UCLA, I confer upon each of you the degrees for which you have been presented with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Class of 2020, Academic tradition suggests that a student who has not yet earned their degree wear their tassel on the right side of the mortarboard. With your degrees now conferred, I invite you to move your tassel to the left side. Congratulations! Hey guys, so I think we're just about to graduate, or maybe we already graduated. So we're gonna get ready to move this tassel, okay? First though, you want to pop out that hip like a sassy queen that you are, or maybe a king, 
all right? And we're gonna do a walk. I want you to get up, walk to the front, move that tassel to the left, and then we're gonna be finished, okay? Rise, let's do it. Congratulations to the class of 2020, and to the real world, I say, game on. Yay! <laughs> Congrats, everyone! M C L A Class of 2020. Yes, we made it! Woohoo! Hello! Congratulations to the 2020 UCLA School of Music senior graduates. To put it into music terms, you're about to end one movement and start your next. You're transitioning from being a student to now becoming an alumnus. I know you're graduating into a scary world, but music is just such an enduring force. Difficult times are often the most inspiring times to find your voice, to find your musical style. Don't underestimate the power and the importance of music and art right now. As an alumni, it's been so inspiring to see all of the creativity that has come out of our community during this difficult time as we work together to create and as we continue to heal. And just know that out of every challenge comes great art and we're counting on you now more than ever. Go out into this world and make wonderful music. In the weeks and months ahead, I know that you will bring your artistry to the world. In graduation, you are moving from being a student to an alumnus, and we, the School of Music alumni, are here to welcome you into our community. The UCLA community is here to support you in any way we can, and your faculty, your staff, and alumni community are here to support your growth. Because uh, that's what Bruins do, we support each other. You have a fan base, you have people rooting for you. And I hope that you find comfort in joining a massive network of working music professionals from UCLA. There are thousands of us out here who deeply care about your success and want to do what we can to help. As the alumni group, we are here for you. We are a resource. Please reach out to us. If you ever have any questions, then please don't hesitate to reach one of us. Or you can also contact the Assistant Director of Alumni Relations, Rory O'Toole, and she'll help you get in contact with us. And please get involved. We want to hear from you and we want to know what you're up to. Please stay in touch. Keep your contact information updated with the school. And welcome to the club. Congratulations, class of 2020, you did it. Congratulations, celebrate, stay safe, stay healthy. Take care and congratulations. We we'll hope to see you soon. A special thank you to our alumni board for their warm welcome to the class of 2020. I encourage each of our graduates to take advantage of the many resources available to the School of Music alumni. They will provide a wonderful sense of connection and support for many years to come. As our commencement ceremony comes to a close, I have the unique pleasure and delight of presenting to you one last final music performance of UCLA's own alma mater, sung by our very own music school student, Christina Perez. Following our formal event, graduates and families are invited to join virtual receptions hosted by each of our school's department chairs. I thank you for joining us. I hope you'll stay connected for years to come. And I'm just so proud of all of you. Congratulations, class of 2020, and go Bruins! Hail to the hills of Westwood, to the mighty sea below. Hail to our alma mater, she will conquer every foe. For we're loyal to the Southland, her honor will uphold. We'll gladly give our hearts to To the blue and to the gold. 
body feels like this every day and wish their worries go away but i know a trace of sunshine bring a smile through the rain now nothing's the same special song and it makes them wanna sing along yeah i live like there's no tomorrow live through the crazy nights 